participants okay. on the call. Uh, Mm. Mother Lavanya, are you there? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. Is all right, Shri Guru Maharaj. Did you send out the link for this? Yeah, Kena Jana Salakaya Chaksu Un Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale. Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam Uma Om Vishnu Badaya Krishna Pristaya Mutale Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorbani Pacharine Nirishesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine Panchakalpa Tarubhisya Vipa Sindhu, Vaivacha, Patitanam, Pavane, Bio, Vaishnava, Bio, Namahu, Namaha, Jai, Sri Krishna, Jaitanya, Prabhunityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadad, Har, Sivasadi, Gaur, Bhakta, Rinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. So, if devotees recall, we have been. Uh, doing a uh, series of talks on the Shikshastika prayers. Uh, we have done three lectures and then for the last two days we were preempted and were uh, engaged in uh, doing programs for Charlotte and for Miami. So now we will come back and continue with our Shikshastika presentation. And uh, we did two talks, uh, actually three, three talks, uh, two on the first verse, one is an overview, and we also did a fourth talk on part of the second verse. So we'll review the second verse and then we'll complete the second verse today. Uh, again, just as a recap, these verses, are in line with the uh, nine processes of bhakti as explained and designated by Srila Rupa Goswami, wherein he clearly, through careful research of Shastra and by his own deep understanding, came to the conclusion of bhakti that has nine stages. And these are also confirmed by all the Acharyas after Lord Rupa Goswami. So there's no question about the authenticity of his findings. And there they are, they are in two verses, Adao Strata, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, Anartha Nivritti, Nishta, Ruchi, Ashakti, Bhava, and prema these are the nine stages each one of us is on one one of those stages and the whole process of bhakti is to execute your service according to the rules and regulations of that particular stage and then aspire to go to the next stage so these nine, these, I'm sorry, these eight verses are in line with the nine processes or stages of bhakti. The first verse is actually a Dao Strata, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, which means faith, which brings one to the association of devotees. In the association of devotees, the second stage reveals itself one develops the activities of Krishna conscious, such as hearing, chanting, remembering, worshiping, praying, serving. And then one develops an attraction and that attraction becomes strong. One wants to make devotional service their life's goal. So then they take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master and become initiated. And that is Bhajana Kriya, that is the third stage. 
Now this next verse, um, verse number two, which we'll talk today, is in line with um, Anartha Nibriti. Now we have to remember that all these verses are spoken by Lord Chaitanya in a mood of a conditioned soul. Although he's not a conditioned soul, he's speaking in that mood from the perspective of one who is a practitioner of bhakti. And he takes on the role of the practitioner as the practitioner moves through the different stages. So you'll see that he speaks generally and then very specifically, ecstatically, and then in pure love for Krishna. So he moves his consciousness from one level of bhakti to another as he recites these eight verses. So the second verse we can put up on the board. Uh, Runda, can you put the second verse on the board, please? Uh, yes, Maharaj. Hmm. Oh, is this the one, Maharaj, or this? So that's the third verse. We want to go to the second verse, oh. which is the which is before that. Mataji, it's number 16. Oh, okay. 16. Okay. 16. Okay, nam nam akari bahudani jasarg vishakti stadraipitan niyamita smarane nakalaha Etad Sri Tava Kripa Bhagavan Mamapi Durdhaiva Midri Sammihanjani Nanuragaha My Lord, O Supreme Personality of Godhead, in your holy name there is all good fortune for the living entity. And therefore you have many names such as Krishna and Govinda by which you expand yourself. You have invested all your potencies in those names and there's no hard and fast rules for remembering them. My dear Lord, although you bestow such mercy upon the fallen conditioned souls by liberally teaching your holy names, I am so unfortunate that I commit offenses while chanting the holy name and therefore I do not achieve attachment for chanting. So uh, Lord Chaitanya is teaching here that if we don't develop an attachment for chanting, or we don't have an attachment for chanting, there is something wrong. There's something wrong because attachment is Krishna coming purely in sound vibration. What is that something wrong? There is some blocks and those blocks are called anarthas. Here, Lord Chaitanya just indicates one type of anartha and that is offenses. There is anarthas in bhakti. There is anarthas by way of pious activities. There is an artist by way of impious activities. There is an artist due to offenses. Bhakti Vinod Thakur, who is a great spiritual scientist, has delineated these four categories and shown that within each category, there are four subcategories. For instance, in the category of Bhakti, there are four anarthas. One is not knowing your own identity. In other words, not knowing that you're a spirit soul. Two, not knowing the position of Krishna. In other words, not knowing Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the cause of all causes, and the uh, purpose of all activities. Three, not knowing the process of uh, the sadhana, the sadhana of uh, bhakti and prema bhakti. In other words, not knowing how to perform devotional service as given by the rules and regulations mentioned in the scriptures for beginners and for those who are advanced. 
And the fourth in Arthur's is not clearly understanding what is not bhakti. In other words, allowing for certain principles, philosophies, teachings, uh, uh, in general, things that are not bhakti, one may consider to be bhakti. For example, uh, the Mayavadi philosophy, which says that the living, the living entity, you say soham, uh, soham, soham means I am that. So in the scriptures, there's a, there's a statement called soham, which means I am that. But that doesn't refer to the living entity, it refers to God, where the Mayavadi say refers to the living entity. That I am that, I am that, I am that element which is pure spiritual energy. I am that, I am the supreme, I am God. So that's an example of what sometimes people don't know the difference between bhakti and what is not bhakti. And therefore we have what is called vidis and nishetas, things to do and things to avoid. In uh, technical terms, it is called anukulena and pratikulena. Uh, things that are favorable for devotional service and things that are not favorable. By not knowing clearly these two categories, that is an anartha, and one has to uh, receive the knowledge to overcome this, this block. It's a block because it can cause one to commit offenses. Okay, then there was four anarthas due to pious activities. That means uh, desires to go to the heavenly planets to enjoy material happiness. Desires to develop mystic yoga. Desires to enjoy material sense gratification and desire for liberation. So people are born in pious families and because of being born in pious families, they have many good qualities, but failing to understand the goal of life, they try to use their good qualities to elevate themselves in one of these four categories by trying to become a mystic yoga by developing cities, powers, or wanting to go to the heavenly planets and enjoy better forms of sense gratification, or even trying to enjoy sense gratification on this planet, which is considered to be authorized sense gratification. It is not sinful, but it is not bhakti. And the last one is liberation, wanting to free themselves from the sufferings of material uh, nature and uh, attained uh, what we say, moksha or liberation. These are the four anarthas in uh, pious activities. Now we have four anarthas in impious activities. That is engaging in sense gratification that is sinful such as breaking of the four regulative principles and things related to sinful activities. Envy, that's the second one. The third one is, is uh, duplicity and fault finding. And the last one is pratishta or the desire for material fame. In other words, to become famous, which is a very, difficult an art to get rid of because everyone wants to be famous in some respect. And the last one is the, the artists that come by way of offenses, which is mentioned here by Lord Chaitanya. We also have four categories and they are offenses to the Lord, his deity form, offenses to the holy name, we, we, we recite those offenses regularly. Um, offenses to Vaishnavas. And the last one is offenses to people in general, the conditioned souls, the materialists. So these are the four offenses. Now, Lord Chaitanya says, I am so unfortunate 
Your holy name is so merciful. There's no hard and fast rules. We can chant anytime, any place, anywhere. There is no requirements for chanting. The only requirement is have to have a tongue and some ears to hear the sound. That's the only requirement. And uh, yeah, and you have many, many names, Krishna, Govinda, Gobinath, Madan, Mohan, you know, but Sham Sundar, so many beautiful names of the Lord. These are all the primary names of the Lord. And, uh, and you made them easy available. And not only that, you've put all your power, all your energy, all your Shakti. In fact, you put your, health, your whole self, everything about the absolute truth, the personality of Godhead is found within Krishna's name. It is the complete manifestation of Krishna coming in the form of transcendental sound. So much benefit is available and so easily available. But what did Lord Chaitanya says? I commit offenses. I door daivam. The word door daivam is important. I am misfortunate. Although I have great fortune at my doorstep, I remain misfortunate. So we might find ourselves in the same situation, feeling misfortunate. We don't develop attraction or attachment for chanting the holy names because of the blockages of trying to fulfill or try or ex executing one or more of these anarchists. You can still get a taste for the holy name while you have an arthas, but you have to free yourself, as Bhakti Vinod Thakur clearly explains, three quarters or 75% of the anarthas have to be destroyed before one can move to the next stage, which is called nishta, being fixed in devotional service. Sometimes devotees wonder, why am I not fixed in devotional service? I've been practicing so many years. I'm still attracted to material things. I still deviated my practice. I also find myself not finding any attraction. Why? It's because of these anarchists. So we have to make sure that we know what they are and we try to remove them. Now, Bhakti Vinoda Kaur explains that the process of Bhakti is the process for removing these anarthas, but he does give an interesting statement, which is, it's not concessionary, but it's actually the essence of how to destroy an artist. He says that by engaging in Harinam Sankirtan, the chanting of the holy names of the Lord with the other devotees, an artist are crushed, just like one will take uh, some peanuts and crush them into powder to make it into a preparation. So in the same way, our nartas can be crushed by the power of Harinam Sankirtan, like that. So Lord Chaitanya is giving us a little bit of a indication why we don't develop attachment for chanting. That attachment should be strong where we look forward to chanting and then while we're chanting, we're not thinking, well, you know, I just can't wait till I finish my chanting so I can um, do something practical, something more, uh, what we say, beneficial. <laughs> we might also think like that. So uh, Lord Chaitanya is very merciful. And just to clarify one point, the Lord has many millions of names. Actually, in one statement in the Shastras, it says that the Lord has no names. He is nameless, but he's given these different names by his characteristics, his qualities, his relationships with his devotees, his connection with holy places of pilgrimage, such as Vrindavan Nath, 
is a name for the Lord, the Lord of Vrindavan, connected with his, his spiritual abode, Vrindavan. Yasomatinandana is a name of Krishna, which is connected to his relationship with his mother. She, he is the bliss of his mother, Yasoda. Mm -hmm. But he has what is called secondary names. These secondary names are really his names that are, we don't chant these names. They're just titles that are connected to the Supreme Lord in terms of his functions and how he functions in the material world in order to get things done. So he's called Ishwara. He's called Param Brahman. He's called God. In other words, names that are just in relationship to the, his functioning of the material energy. These names we don't chant, but we do chant the names that are primary names, as Lord Chaitanya mentions here, Krishna, Govinda, like that. Okay, one should be very careful to avoid these, uh, of these anartas, or to remove their anartas. Bhaktivinoda Akura gives a little graph, and by describing the graph, there is five stages by which an artist are removed. And one is, the first is called uh, one an artha. The second one is called uh, many. Two is pervasive. Three is almost destroyed. And four is absolute. I mean, five is absolute. Three is, four is, uh, in other words, uh, as you go through getting rid of your anarthas, they also connect with the different stages. As you go from one stage to another, in the process of anartha nivritti, you actually remove these anarthas, where if you get rid of 75%, you move to nishta. The anarthas that stay with us, that are hard to get rid of, and they're easy to fall into is what is mentioned here, offenses. So one has to be very diligent and very aware not to commit offenses because offenses will block the taste of our the holy name. And if we don't get a taste for chanting, it becomes somewhat hard to continue chanting. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, and I should mention one other thing. On the fourth stage of removal of anartas is called, is called complete. Uh, no, it's called almost complete, almost complete. And then there's complete, and then there's absolute. These are the five stages. Complete is the third stage. Uh, uh, almost, uh, Almost complete is the third stage, complete is the fourth stage, and absolute is the fifth stage. In other words, you can completely get rid of an anartha, but it can come back unless you reach the fifth stage, which is called absolute. Like devotees may also see that in the beginning they were struggle with the, struggling with a particular anartha. So just say one of the anarthas would be uh, finding fault with others. So somehow or other, due to their diligence and their intelligence, they stopped it. And they stopped it for some time. But then again, somehow or other, it came, comes back. That means there was still a spark of that anartha still left within the heart. And unless that spark is eradicated, it has a tendency, just as a fire, if, you put, if you're trying to put out a fire and you leave a little bit of the fire burning, that same spark that is still ignited can create the whole fire again. So almost complete and then complete and then absolute. Mm -hmm. All right, so we can stop here and see if there's any questions.
Thank you so much, Maharaj. It was very beautiful. Thank you. Devotees, are there, if there are any questions, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, you mentioned that um, Bhajana Kriya is the phase at which we get initiated. And I was just wondering if somebody can um, perform Anartha Nivriti prior to initiation. Uh, to a certain degree, but it's the, it's the mercy of the spiritual master that consummates the efforts that we are making. And it's also his direction that is required to help us overcome these anarthas. But to some degree, that anartha can be overcome. But it may not be complete. At any stage of bhakti, there is advancement. But in the, when the stages before accepting instructions from the spiritual master, we're pretty much left with whatever we hear and whatever we read as our guiding principle. But the spiritual master's instructions manifest themselves in the terms of the mercy that's connected with the instruction. So when we follow the instructions, not only do we get the knowledge given by the instructions, but we get the mercy also. Guru's mercy. So yes, to some degree, part of an anarchy can be dissipated but not completely. Or it may reach complete completeness, but then again, it hasn't reached the stage of absolute. Because unless you go to the stage of absolute, there is the likelihood that the anarthas will, that anartha will again return. I don't know if that was enough. Yes, Grimaj. Thank you very much. It's clear? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Your Holiness. Thank you so much for detailing very clearly where we need to watch ourselves because this just gives me a very good idea about the various points at which we have to put in our attention where we are going wrong so i really appreciate it and uh, i got number three four and five almost complete complete and absolutely destroyed but i didn't catch number one and two on that graph of bhakti vinod thakur would you please repeat them yeah number one is one and number two is many one anartha removed, many, many removed. So um, let's see here. I'll give you more of a detailed explanation by going to my files and finding that. Uh, let's see. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think where my uh, information is stored here.
Okay, we found it. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay, so on the category of bhakti, you remember those four things that we mentioned? Yes, I remember the four categories, not knowing your identity, not knowing position of Krishna, not knowing the process of sadhana bhakti and prema bhakti, and not clearly understanding what is not bhakti, getting mixed up with my philosophy and so on. So the eradication of anarthas for that category is, is partial on bhajana kriya, kriya, it's complete on nishta, and it's absolute on ruchi. Going to the next two categories, sin and pious activities, it's almost complete on bhajana kriya, it's complete on nishta, and it's absolute on ashakti. Uh, in aparad offenses, it's partial on bhajana kriya. It's pervasive on nishta. That's the second category. It's almost complete on bhava. It's complete on prema, and it's absolute when one sees Krishna face to face. You can see how tough it is to get rid of the, the offenses. That's where we have to really work to be careful not to commit offenses. So the graph so my question is, the, the graph is one anatta removed, the second, many anatta is removed, and what is the third pervasive? And no, then the first is partial, the second is pervasive, third is almost complete, fourth is complete, and fifth is absolute. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Guru Maharaj, where can we find this information about these uh, stages corresponding because that went a little quick. I, I couldn't write them down, but I can look them up if, or would you please share it with everyone, please? I can share you these graphs, but the stages that align themselves with the, the uh, verses, um, that comes by way of just uh, the knowledge given to us in Rupa Goswami's writings and they trans transmitted to us through the Acharyas. And I can send you the graft, which is the graft is coming from Bhajana Rahasya, which is in the Amnaya Sutra of the Bhajana Rahasya. There are, this is all mentioned here. So I can send you the graft. And then he ends, he says, the creeper of devotion can never grow as long as one cannot give up these anarthas. But then he says, all anarthas, however, go far away by the performance of Nam Sankirtan. So I can send this, this little text. Where should I send it? <laughs> Uh, maybe to Lavanya Mataji, and then she can send it to all those who want, if you think that's all right, Guru Maharaj. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still would like information about um, the categories, like uh, when you said at Bhajana Kriya, a certain level at Nishta, a certain level for each of those four. Where is that information available, Maharaj? Guru Maharaj? Oh, 
I didn't understand your question. For example, you said the uh, the the in the category of bhakti, the absolute is at ruchi level. Partial. Yeah, it's, it's in this graph that I'm going to send. Oh, very good, very good. Thank you, thank you so much. This is extremely helpful. I'm so grateful for this. Yeah, and then you see where you need to work. <laughs> yes, Bhakti, exactly. Bhakti, Bhakti requires intelligence. Sometimes the devotees would come to Prabhupada and said, "Prabhupada, I have no intelligence." Prabhupada said, then get some. Or he would say, then, then find someone who has intelligence and they can help you. So we, it's not just sentiment. Bhakti is a combination of philosophy coupled with spiritual sentiment. The spiritual sentiment if it's not directed by clear philosophical uh, foundational principles given to us by the acharyas, that bhakti sentiment can go into different directions and then one can find themselves uh, acting in the material way and thinking it's spiritual. Therefore, we have to have a clear understanding of the process. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Yes, thank you so much for your Krishna Guru Maharaj Dandavatanam. Um, how can we see or or uh, discriminate uh, between these uh, different stages of bhakti? Uh, uh, is there some description about the qualities which we develop uh, while yeah. uh, moving from one to another yeah. stage? Yeah, each stage has certain what we say characteristics which are meant, there are certain principles that are meant to be practiced and certain characteristics that are exhibited to indicate what level of practice you're on. And where is it mentioned? Um, mostly through the writings of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. <clears throat> and uh, also you can find it spread throughout Srimad Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. You can see if you, at least if you know what the anarthas are, we just mentioned those, and see how many. Most of us are are struggling with anartha nivritti. We're on the stage, and we're trying to get to nishta. Some of us are on the stage of nishta. Nishta means. I got rid of 75% of my anarthas, I'm steady. You can't be steady in bhakti as long as you haven't reached 75% of the anarthas removed. Then the anarthas will cause you to remain unsteady. So if you're steady, that means if you are executing your bhakti every day, in a very regulated way, at the same time, steady in your your attachment to Krishna. In other words, you're becoming more and more eager to get attached to Krishna. So you're hearing about Krishna more. You're chanting Krishna's name more. You know, you actually moved to the stage of nishta. You're fixed. Something comes along. It's not going to knock you off bhakti. And then the next stage is Ruchi. And Ruchi is the stage where there, there is also certain characteristics, such as there's two stages of Ruchi within the category of Ruchi. 
One is called Excellence of Elements, and the other one is called uh, uh, um, Elements Without Excellence. So that, what does that mean? Is that elements without excellence is higher than excellence of elements. What does that mean is that it doesn't matter what the prashadam tastes like, it's prashadam. It doesn't matter what the kirtan is, if it's melodious or not, it's kirtan. It doesn't matter, you know, what the deities are dressed in, the deities look beautiful each time. So in other words, that's uh, excellence without the elements of perfection, apparently. That's a higher stage of ruchi. The lower stage is, unless the kirtan is melodious and the singer is singing nicely and the prashadam is good, I can't get into it. That's the stage of Ruchi. So you can see these are some of the characteristics of the Ruchi stage. Thank you so much. And we'll go through these different verses indicating the different stages. And while we do that, we'll mention the different characteristics of each stage. Lord Chaitanya is giving us, and the third stage, we'll speak about that tomorrow, is Nishta. What are the characteristics of one on the platform of Nishta? So nice explanation. Such a nice. Yeah. If we're not, if we don't get the nishta, then we're going to have, we're not going to really, uh, you know, get a taste for bhakti. We got to get to the, the stage of nishta, at least. But if we want to get to uh, Krishna at the end of this material life, then uh, do we need to reach certain stage? Or can we go to Krishna from any stage? For no, example, yeah, someone. No, Krishna, you have to, to go to the spiritual world. You have to be of the qualities of the residents of the spiritual world. That means they have they've developed love for Krishna. You can't get to the spiritual world and then continue working on developing love for Krishna. <laughs> you, the ticket to get to the spiritual world is love for Krishna. Yes, I understand. I mean, like, uh, for example, some um, devotees, they leave the body uh, while they are still uh, quite young. And how is it with them then? Well, it depends on what level of what, what their consciousness was. It's all based on consciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to remember Krishna at the time of death if you're not Krishna consciousness while you're living. Yeah. I have just read uh, some article about uh, what happens at the time of death. And there was written that this is actually very, very big exam. Very like, big, big what? Exam. I don't, I, examination. Big what? Big examination, like exam. Yeah, it's called the final examination. Yeah. That's the title of a book that we have in our library, the final examination. Was, given by uh, Gary Ride Swami. Mm -hmm. wow. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you so much for this.
topic today it is such an important topic because uh, unless we are uh, unless we don't get rid of this anarthas we will not taste, develop the taste for chanting and that's a basic thing i have to do to develop the taste for chanting but maharaj i was thinking like uh, sometimes i must be making uh, offenses unknowingly or uh, unwillingly so how can i uh, get rid of those like i may not know that i am making offense so yeah what i do for that you should pray that you can do you can offer individual prayers praying for praying to the lord to relieve you from the offenses that you unknowingly committed if you pray like that you'll also be able to see or understand um some of the offenses that you may have committed and then you can uh, go back and rectify those every offense has a rectification attached to it yeah yes Uh, so maharaj we know the offenses the list of offenses to the holy name of the lord so apart from that do we have any other any other list of offenses that we should avoid is there a proper list uh, so yeah, there is offenses there is offenses to the holy dam which is 10 offenses to the holy dam 10 offenses to the holy name plus the 11th offense um there's different degrees there's six ways you can offend a devotee a devotee as by bhakti vinod thakur he he describes six ways you can commit vaishnav aparad so in those categories there's different degrees of severity i'll give you an example i'll mention the six Uh, the most uh, greatest offense for Vaishnava Aparad is to kill a kill a Vaishnava. That's the most serious one. Next down from that is to blaspheme a Vaishnava. Next down from that is to become envious of a Vaishnava. Next down from that is to become angry with a Vaishnava. The next down from that. is let me think oh forgot that one um and the last one is to not feel happy when you see a vaishnava so even if you if you see a vaishnava and you don't feel happy that's an offense so how do you get rid of it it's the least of all the offenses of vaishnav so what do you do you pay your obeisances if you pay if you don't feel happy seeing a vaishnava you pay your obeisances and that immediately nullifies the effects of that mm -hmm. yes. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur gives these six uh, levels of committing offense against Vaishnava. So if you feel envious towards someone, you just pray. Now, if you blaspheme someone, then you have to apologize to that devotee. Mm -hmm. You find fault with a Vaishnava. and then you have to apologize for that if it causes some so there's there's different the vaishnava aparad is a whole seminar in itself okay so we'll stop here i have to, on sunday i have to end right at the hour because something so yeah, something comes up at at my time at the hour so uh, yeah guru maharaj hari krishna uh, yes. guru maharaj just wanted to confirm today's class's time is 4 pm uk time 
Yeah, 4 p.m. UK time, which, yeah, that's the actual time for the class. And I, it's, uh, it's five o'clock my time, but 4 p.m. UK time. Okay, Guru Maharaj, thank you so much. Okay, which is a couple hours from now, three hours from now, I guess. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you for enlightening us on this topic today. Very okay. beautiful class. And if anybody has trouble getting on, immediately connect with uh, Tushar, and he can probably get you on really fast if you have any problem. Okay. But it shouldn't be any problem. Very good. So, Guru Maharaj, your class uh, information will be available. Oh, Guru Maharaj has left. Mataji, posted in the group, WhatsApp group. Mataji, I have posted in the WhatsApp group.